Hello, everybody. Uh, this is uh, clickstars.com, and welcome to our first tutorial review information session. Um, beside us, uh, we've got some a team of experts to help you build a cover for a cover-based tournament. Uh, I'm Steve Abrams. I'm Gordon Scullis. I'm Darren Dew. I'm Troy Hyde. Regular players at Clickstar, you may have seen us, at least our hands or our bellies. Or our mouths. Or, or, or hear us, yeah. <laughs> this guy curses. Especially that This guy, guy yells. <laughs> and this guy just yell. moans in the background. And I laugh. And it's, it's, <laughs> it's a little bit. <laughs> All right. So um, Darren's going to tell you a little bit what cover oh, yeah. yeah. So uh, many years ago when we first started playing Heroclix, a lot of us were excited about the idea of putting together teams based upon comic book covers. And uh, to Richard and I, the judges that have been around town and playing oh, Heroclix the longest, we were extremely excited about it, and we liked that um, dedication to comics and the things that we had grown up on. A very big sense of nostalgia, us being old men and in our forties, wanting to play themes uh, teams based upon the comics that we remember as kids. So um, we put together a little bit of structure. Uh, it, it was it was exciting because there were a lot of times of mixtures of heroes and villains that made it hard to build theme teams, but it was also trying to outdo each other on our dedication to the actual cover using sometimes objects or specific uh, uh, sculptures out of a different set that match the comic book cover instead of maybe the optimal uh, figure for that spot on a regular team that we might build for competition. So it became more about remembering that comic and being dedicated to the uh, artwork on the cover of that comic. And we've had a lot of fun with it. It's been one of our most popular formats over the years. So we've gotten a lot of good uh, mileage out of it. Definitely. A lot of fun. Uh, and there's always, like, everyone has their own method for building uh, comic covers. Uh, I, myself, will go, will spend, like, days on the Marvel Wikia uh, looking for a character. Like, I, I decide, like, from this set, I want this character. Yeah. And start uh, I start somewhere, like, you know, Red Tornado. I want to build a team on Red Tornado. So I sort through the 5,000 comics that Red Tornado has been in. He might not be on the cover, but, you know, at least it's all easily accessible online. Uh and uh, but you know everyone here has a different method. Uh, Gordon, if you want to, well, okay. Honestly, mine starts out about the same way. I usually find a character that I'm really interested in using. It's usually a nerdiest thing I can think of. Uh, you know, sometimes obscure characters, sometimes that big one that I really like. And then I try to find usually something that has at least uh, one like general support character, um, somebody with probability control or perplex or outwit. Specifically, outwit and probability control. Those are the, the two most important things for me to have. And then somebody that's a pretty heavy hitter. So somebody that can really come up and you know knock somebody around. And uh, that's that's my big thing. Is support and heavy hitter. So. Anyway. Uh, well, when I generally build a cover, I don't care about optimal. I don't care if it's going to be destroyed or anything. <laughs> Actually, one of the things I look for all the time are figures that technically aren't supposed to be in there. And I'll get into that a little bit later, but there's just a lot of ways you can sneak in other universes and other such things. Uh, and I, I, I'm like Steve, I like doing a lot of research and going through my comic collection and dragging out things that I haven't seen in a long time. And, and sometimes I won't really get the finishing touches on my comic until I've actually read the story again and I've forgotten a character that was in there, a certain version of the character, but I like trying to find unusual mix, mixes of characters that maybe don't appear all together because you're expecting the Avengers or Justice League to always be together but with things like Marvel Team Up or some of the anniversary or uh, annuals those tend to have odder mixes they'll have special guest stars and they'll have unusual villains they'll have an X-Men villain in an Avengers comic things like that and so those are the ones to me that are most exciting because you get to play characters that normally you don't get to see together yeah uh, so, in front of us, we've got a lot of examples of potential covers. Uh, I mean, we've got, uh, and some of them, you know, you'll, we'll see the covers probably pop up in the background or at clickstars.com here. But uh, for a closer view, let's start off with uh, ch -ch -ch -ch, uh, this simple cover right here. Yeah. This was actually put together by uh, someone who was going to be here tonight, but he's sick, uh, Mr. Charles Morris. Hi, Charles. Hi, Charles. Charlie. <laughs> um and, well, he has this actually in person, but I had to print it out because I don't own it. Uh, it's a Spider-Man cover that involves Thanos and uh, Spider-Man, of course, because it's Spider-Man. And a full Infinity Gauntlet. And a full Infinity Gauntlet. Now, here's the thing. 
uh, with a cover, you always have to make those tough decisions. Like this, like technically, Thanos has is already wearing the Infinity Gauntlet. So, you know, I'm going to, either way, he's going to be played at his 500 point value. And then there's a hard decision, like, technically, I could include a resource, which in this case, the Infinity Gauntlet, and I could roll it with the 50 point, you know, Marvel 10th anniversary piece, or the Spider-Man from Incredible Hulk, which is 90. Either way, it's going to come out around, uh, you know, six, six, 690. Yeah. Uh, or actually, 500. 590. Math. <laughs> um, so there's that tough decision that you have to make. Like, and, and in, in some cases, it's not so tough because some places outright ban resources, which I don't blame them. But at the same time, you know, there's always that, that, those places that if they play, it's kind of like you can't get go in, in there without a resource. So it's fun every once in a while to, to bring out something that's just going to completely can't change the face of the game. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, uh, what do we got here? What else we got? Uh, you came up with a pretty cool X-Men cover. It's a, yeah, 952 points. It was the uh, cover <laughs> of Uncanny X-Men, uh, volume two, number one. And it has nine, nine X-Men on it. And, uh, this one was kind of difficult to build because I have only been playing a year. So I've, I'm kind of limited on how many different, um, pieces I have. So this is this was a little harder to um, you know I had to pick I had between like four different versions of Emma Frost two uh, Cyclops and so on so I managed to squeeze in what I had but I still had to sacrifice Magneto um, this piece is usually I, I like to play him at 250 points he's a lot better at 250 but I had to bring him down to the uh, 125 so cut his point value in half I was only 77 over a thousand which was the the build total for the for that tournament but it was a lot harder to get him to work at or, no I didn't really have much options on cutting stuff out and he was he was my best choice yeah that's I mean that's probably one of the biggest sacrifices that you have to worry about in a comic cover uh, is to run a little short or potentially like most places uh, here at Morningstar we allow for a one point flex one percent one percent yeah one, not one point one percent uh, so you know on a uh, you know 1,000 point match it's going to be 1,010 uh, but that's like, not much room. That's not much room. <laughs> but sometimes it makes a difference. Uh, for exa like, in there. example here, like I had a Sergeant Rock cover here, a hundred point theme team uh, that has basically two tanks, and it, together it's a one hundred and one point. So, so it comes underneath that one percent radar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And we did that because uh, comic book cover teams are sometimes so hard to build, and you just find out you're four points over on a 600-point team that you've worked extremely hard on, and there's no other option for that unusual character that's on that cover that you really wanted to play, and we just felt like it was we were making it too hard. So we decided that since you, there's so many sacrifices that you're making anyway, we'll make a 1% flex specifically for comic book cover tournaments. Yeah. Uh, so what else we got here? Troy, you want to talk about yours? That one's a great one. Sure. I think you snuck in underneath the radar there. <laughs> yes, definitely. So, as I said, whenever I try to construct a team, I try to find a way to sneak in things that aren't really supposed to be there. So, I will go to, you know, My High Comics or something like that, and I will look up uh, a set that's out but is very obscure and you wouldn't really think was in a comic, but they land in there. And sometimes they cross over with regular Marvel or DC. And the one drawback to that is that usually the other universe you're trying to include, there's only one version of the characters from that universe. So you have to stick with those points. And even while if you try to get everybody in their right costumes and everything, sometimes with, uh, for instance, Storm, the costume on this coverage doesn't exist. Either they're to go, or for some reason, they haven't made it. You never really know why. Though that leads into the possibility of, like, encouraging modding for yeah. comic covers. Mm -hmm. uh, I, we'll come back to that. We'll come back to that, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, that's, that's not discouraged. Yeah. <laughs> but at the same time, I, I just, you know, being able to throw in the Enterprise. Well, yeah. yeah. Without the Enterprise, it's, um, a, it's a 785. With the Enterprise, you're coming up to about 875. So, 
I mean, you could go for a more expensive Wolverine if you don't care about costumes, or you could try to up the storm since you can't get her costume. Right. Yeah. But otherwise, um, another thing that you tr tend to get going if you don't have a lot of old figures, because the great thing about old figures is that they're cheap, so you can fit a lot more on your team. Well, they seem to be changing that with the new sets. So. Well, yeah, yeah they're, they're gearing more towards that. A 60 point but, Magneto. <laughs> 65, yeah. 65 point, point yeah, 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 still, but... Slightly off Steve. <laughs> math again. Math. 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 <laughs> math is hard. But um, it's generally more in the Golden Age area that you have very cheap figures for your characters. And a lot of times team covers the Avengers and Justice League and X-Men. In fact, they're loaded with figures. So it, you're, you're talking about higher point tournaments. And sometimes we try to drive the comic book covers event up to a six or a seven hundred point range, but we've done it with as low as two hundred, where you have like we um, name it after one of the titles that's come out from Marvel or DC, and whether it's a Marvel or DC based event uh, like Marvel Team Up or the Brave and the Bold, something like that, and we'll keep the point value very low. So you're talking about just a couple of characters, and everything's down in the uh, real realm of you know trying to pick out from a limited selection again. So it, it's challenging either way. But I, I love the touches of sometimes I think you. You sent me a text and said, hey, we don't normally allow, like, starships and regular figure events. Can I slide the Enterprise in here? I said, well, is it on the cover? And he's like, yeah. yeah. I said, well, that sounds good to me. <laughs> so he surprised everyone by bringing a starship in there. Um, yeah. Well, I had one that I've done a few times over the years because uh, after I did this the first time, uh, a couple of different variations have come out, obviously, of the Hulk and Iceman and, and obviously a lot more Sentinels now. Um, it's Hulk Annual number 7. It shows uh, the hands of a sentinel attacking uh, the Hulk, Iceman, and Angel from back in their champions days. And Steve was talking about modding figures earlier. Well, this is a fairly standard Iceman from uh, Explosion, 200-point uh, Hulk from, uh, I think, also from Explosion, and then a sentinel from Danger Room. This is an, uh, an Angel figure from the Danger Room, but he's been repainted. I have about seven of these, honestly, <laughs> with different costumes on them. And so that with whatever one I need, he's always 50 points, and he always has charge, and he always he looks right for whatever cover he's on. And, and this one's just slightly different than a couple of the other ones I have. He has yellow gloves and yellow boots. So if you look at the cover, which Steve will probably yeah. have graphic just, up there. Just in case, we'll hold it up here. Yeah. He's got yellow boots and yellow gloves. Yeah. So I painted him to match what he's got on his cover. Um, one of the other ones that I did is definitely going to have to be a graphic. It's Obnoxio the Clown and versus the X-Men. And I think it was a 600-point event, and the Cyclops that I wanted to play was the Tab App Cyclops, which obviously a 3-inch a figure out there with the rest of the team would be distracting. And I always liked the original, and he came out in the 80s. The comic came out in the 80s. So I used the Infinity Challenge Cyclops and moved him over from the dial that he originally came on, which was like 35 points or 36 35, points. Yeah. And uh, I put him behind some trash cans, and I put him on the Tab App dial, so it's still the figure that matches the cover, but it also uses a, a dial that's a little bit more progressive and in line with some of today's statistics. But several of the other figures, like Shadowcat and Iceman, was on that team. They're very weak by today's standards, but they're usually only 35 points, as Troy said. So that was a fun cover because a couple of them got to you know soak up damage and distract people while some of my other figures got into position. But they definitely offensively were not in the game very much. Yeah. I mean, comic covers allows a lot of creative people to come up with, you know, a lot of different options just to, you know, it gives, like, you know, a lot of people complain that hero clicks, you can't mod them. You know, it's not like Warhammer where you can paint the figures. And this absolutely proves. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Ain't wrong. I mean, unless you hit, like, you, you care about resale value. But in some <laughs> cases, I mean, I'm looking online and a modded figure can go higher. Yeah. Uh, Especially shoot. like Tab App Cyclops. Yeah. You can get him I for mean, three or four I was bucks. searching eBay and someone modded a Jean, uh, or not a Jean Grey, uh, uh, I don't know. Anyways, they made that person naked. And that naked person was going for like 40 bucks. Oh, yeah. Which is weird. That's, I don't want to lose That's just weird. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, views just went up high. Your attentions are peaked because I said the word naked. Um, anyways, uh, so the big thing about like, uh, there's a lot of cons. Like we were talking about, like you have to run short running older pieces against newer pieces, but that's rectified essentially, you know, a lot of new pieces are coming out. 
yeah. that, that are, are, are low point. Like the, the juggernaut that's going to be coming out in Iron, Invincible Iron Man, how much is going to I think he's 115. 115, that's just, you know, for juggernaut. They're, they're either they're low point or they have multiple point values. Yeah, yeah which, a lot more yeah. point values. Yeah, yeah it like, really helps. Yeah, indeed. Uh, and, 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 you know, we all agree that cover tournaments are probably our favorite. You know, well, one of our favorites. They're very popular. They're, they're very popular. Um, it, it allows people to geek out at the same time, like show off their their comic book collection. Not everyone has the abundance of, of comics that you know Darren has here, or you know Richard, another uh, regular uh, and judge. Uh, uh, but at the same time, it still allows us to be nostalgic. Very much. So. It is, uh, allows us to break out some odd pieces. <laughs> Like that's one of the biggest complaints is especially you can go into venues is like you see the same pieces over and over again, and comic covers it just like you know you're gonna see those cheap guys that bring out the you know uh, DC and Marvel like you know versus Marvel cover that yeah yeah, has yeah Superman and you know Superman uh, and Spider Man Spider-Man and, and something like <laughs> that, but you know usually they're new or they just they're going for the prize and you know whatever yeah that's why want. like most of the time the prizes here are based on covers. Yeah, the yeah, fellowship, the fellowship prizes. prizes. Yeah. So we, people try to be obscure. Sorry. Yeah, no, no, sorry. Uh, we actually vote on fellowship before we start playing based upon the cover so that the uh, – really, if they get in the finals and they're going to win the prize, fine. But if they're – you know, if they if they do lousy because they're playing a bunch of uh, Easy Company or some <laughs> old X-Men that are getting torn to pieces, they may still win fellowship for the dedication that they had to their cover. And, uh, you know, so that's a lot of fun. The other thing I was going to say is that one of the big sacrifices is – is theme team bonus usually oh. with mixtures of heroes or heroes and villains or Star Trek? You gotta just learn just, to let it go. Yeah, or you're tossing you, that out. You just have like you know, I'm so limited on, on figures I have. I have magic, magic. You know, you think, oh yeah, X Men character. No X Men mm. keyword on no X Men keyword. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you could go the extra um, mile and, and search online for that old magic. Well, but or, the problem with that yeah. is sometimes you don't have yeah. that much time. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you find hear about out, oh yeah, 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 yeah. We can advance, and it's like yeah. yeah by the, by the time by the time I find the one I'm looking for. Order it and it gets here. The we're like two weeks past yeah, that tournament. Right. I've actually had covers based on if this comes at this day, then I will run this cover. <laughs> uh, I was lucky when I had Obnoxio. Uh, I got him, and then uh, a cover tournament was announced, and I had no plans to do it. And then I thought, oh yeah, wait, there is a cover with him, and I, I wonder if I could build that. And and it just turned into a thing, and that was a surprise because nobody had seen Obnoxio. Oh yeah, I mean that was a that was a cool surprise. That was fun. That yeah. was a good day. But X Men annihilated him. Uh, yeah, I, I did not win. <laughs> I don't think I won but, a single you know, round. Uh, that's no worries. Because uh, it was fun. And that's what matters in Hero Clicks. It's all about nostalgia. Yeah. I wouldn't be playing Hero Clicks if it wasn't for nostalgia. Yeah, like, and, and just being able to come up with these epic battles. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah. Like, um, how often do you see Thanos battling possibly Superman? Right. Or, uh, or Dark or Side. The, or Dark or, Side. That would be the or know, team of X Men versus X Men and the Enterprise. Yeah. So, uh, one time I <laughs> took a team that was Squadron Supreme and Justice League together. So I oh, had yeah. Hyperion and Superman fighting <laughs> against these villains together. <laughs> yeah, that's which awesome. Which was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, I hope everyone learned a little bit about uh, how to build a comic cover. Uh, we want to do more of these little uh, sessions talking yeah, about yeah. it. Uh, maybe one for Halloween coming up. Uh, definitely one for Thor Dark World. Um, yeah, that's right. And uh, so, you know, stay tuned. And we appreciate everyone that watches. It's, it's great to hear your comments, uh, especially if you're calling us on some of our errors. Uh, we never do them on purpose, except for maybe Gordon here. Uh, no, <laughs> joking. Um, I'm calling Kettle Black there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and if you have any ideas, we'd be happy to hear them uh, uh, for what you might like to see for future uh, episodes. Yeah, because we yeah. know there's a lot of uh, Hero Clicks uh, sites online now. Mm -hmm. uh, and we want to be a little different. So tell us what we can do to be different. All right. You're definitely different. I'm slightly different. I thought you were the difference. <sighs> Once again, sounding like my parents. Take <laughs> that back. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, thanks for watching. Once again, and see you next time. Bye. Peace out.